Welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how to create responsive grids in Figma so that you can bring some consistency across your UI designs and make sure that whatever you design will look cool and professional. In this video, we're going to create three grids, one for desktop, tablet and mobile. And I'm going to show you how you can use these grids, not only to bring consistency to your design, but also how to use them to make your designs responsive. So let's stop wasting time and jump straight to Figma. The first thing we need to do is to create the frame for our desktop, tablet and mobile. And to do that, I'm going to go here on frames, select desktop. I'm going to add this one. Then I'm going to add another one frames. I'm going to go to tablet. I'm going to pick the iPad Pro 11, so 834, put it here next to it. And then lastly, I'm going to create another frame for our mobile, which I'm going to use phone. And usually I use iPhone 13 mini. And that's because if you make your designs work on the smallest screen, then obviously if the screen is larger, then you won't have any problems. So usually these three are the main resolutions I work with when I design any UI. Okay, so in order to create the grids, what we need to do is to go to desktop here and you're gonna have this section here called layout grids. If you click on it, you'll see that a grid is created. So usually what I use for grids for desktop is a 12 column grid, for tablet is an eight column grid, and for mobile, it's a four column grid. So to create that, all you need to do is go here at grids, click on this icon over here, select grid, select columns, change it to 12. Then afterwards you can change the color if you want. So you can change this to something that is not so in your face like red. You change it to something like either a dark blue, either a gray. And then here at the gutter, I usually use 16 or 32 depending on the design. And the thing is, is like this is related to a spacing system. So the spacing system, how it's called, is basically just a rule that you apply to your elements and spacing. Meaning that if you, for example, have an 8 pixel spacing system, that means that all spaces between elements should be divisible by 8 and also all the elements that you create should be divisible by 8 pixels. And this is something that was popularized by Google with their material design. So if you're interested to check it out, I will leave a link down below. What I personally use across all my projects, it's an 8 point grid. So that's why here I usually put either 16 or 32 depending on the project, but usually I use 16. So I'm going to leave it to 16. Another thing that I wanted to add here is the margin. So usually the margin is used to have this white space that you see when you go on a website. So whatever happens with the screen, no matter how large it is or how small it gets, you will still have that margin on the left and right. So this is where you put that margin. Personally, what I use for margin is 128 for desktop, 64 for tablet, and then afterwards on mobile, I go really thin with the margins because I want to have as much real estate space to create the UI as possible because the screen is small. So usually I go there either 24 or 16 pixels. But to add another layer on top of it, what I wanna do is create a vertical system as well. And this will help me when I create those elements to make sure that they're divisible by eight points because we're using an eight point grid. So to do that, you just head over here to layout grid, you click on it, and instead of actually having columns, you're gonna have rows. And these rows, you can add the count to thousand or even more if your artboard is really long and if you have a very long design. But usually I go for a thousand. And here where it says type, I will change it to top. I will have the height of eight pixels and then the gutter, I'll just bring it to zero. And that will create this grid that will allow me every single time I create an object to have it divisible by eight. I don't even need to calculate anything. It's just it's being done automatically because the object automatically snaps to the grid. And once I have that, this, this is basically it. Now we're just gonna copy and paste it to our tablet and mobile. So if we delete this, you can just select the artboard and a cool trick that you can use is holding shift on your keyboard. You can actually select these two, command C, command V, and it will automatically paste it to your tablet. Now, the only thing that you need to change here, as I told you, is that the count should be eight. So this is on tablet. And then the margin, I will drop it to 64 pixels, meaning that all design should be included within this, having a margin of 64 pixels. And same as we previously did from the desktop to mobile, I'm just gonna copy these two, command C, Select my mobile, Command V, and I'm just gonna drop again, changing this. I'm gonna 
change the count from 8 to 4. And then the margin, I will actually bring it down to 16 pixels. And this is my mobile grid. And the cool thing about this is that these grids are actually responsive, meaning that if I want to change the width of my frame, I can actually drag it and the grid will automatically adapt to the new screen size. Now, the last thing you need to do to make sure that everything works perfectly and you always create objects and move objects at an eight pixel increment, you need to go here to the main menu and then you go to preferences. Make sure that you have snap to geometry, snap to objects, snap to pixel grid. So this way, all the objects will snap to your grids that you just created. And lastly, here where you have the notch amount, click on it and here you're gonna have probably 10. So just change this to eight pixels. That means that whenever you create an object and you wanna move it, for example, let's create this rectangle. Now, if you wanna move it incrementally using the arrows, obviously this will be like only one pixel. But if you hold shift and you click the arrows, that will move this object eight pixels at a time. That means that the spacing between elements will constantly be eight pixels. So this will bring the consistency across the grids and everything that you do from now on. Now, let me show you how you can use these grids to figure out the responsiveness of your objects. So what I've done on this page is I've created these cards, which are fully responsive, and I've used auto layout to create them. It's gonna be a future video where I'm gonna explain you everything that you need to know about auto layout. So if we copy and paste these cards and add them here, you will see that they fit perfectly in our grid. add it like this you'll see that they're perfectly fitting our grid and that's because i gave them a spacing of 16 pixels and it's the same spacing that we're using for the grid so as you can see everything works fine and everything's okay so now if you copy this and add it to our tablet version if we squeeze everything in you'll see that it doesn't work out it's a bit weird so what you can do is simply just delete two of them and you will see that now, because we're using the same grid and the same spacing, from four cards on tablet, we should use two cards. And that is super logical. But because we have this grid system, we now understand how to lay out our designs. And it's the same thing that goes for mobile. If we copy this from the tablet to the mobile, we're gonna see that, okay, two cards, it's a bit too much. If we squeeze everything in, it's not gonna work out. So if we remove one, then voila. So now this, Kind of like, let's call it, We can. it can be a carousel, it can be anything. From four cards, you get to two cards and one card. It didn't make sense, right? It, it looks visually, it looks good. So this is how you can use grids to make your design responsive. Now, lastly, another pro tip that I want to give you is if, for example, when you're designing, you like to get rid of these grids so you can see how the design actually looks, the only thing you need to do is to hit Control G on your keyboard and that will toggle on and off the grids that you're using. And this is it. This is how you create grids and use them in Figma. And trust me, if you start using these in your designs, you will see amazing results. All your designs will instantly look better. You're going to have more consistency and they will look more professional, which that's what we want, right? I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'm going to see you in the next video pretty soon. Take care. Bye.